So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to go from this image on the left to this black and white HDR on the right. And I'll be using the software from Photomatics, On1, Topaz, as well as NIK Collection. So if you bear with me, hopefully you'll be able to learn how to do this. Hello, my name is Luke Seam. Uh, I've got my website lukeseam.com. And today I'm just going to show you how I made some HDR black and white images. I've released a few recently in uh, my gallery. There is this one from Sydney Harbour, big warship in the Maritime Museum called HMS Vampire. Oh, this is uh, Cockle Bay and Cockle Bay Wharf. And here's the Piermont Bridge, and you can see the Sydney Tower. We're able to get this really dramatic, get this excellent silhouette. If you go to my tutorials link over here, scroll down to a comprehensive list of HDR software and plugins. That would be a good place for you to start. But what you want to do is select one of these tone mapping softwares and uh, experiment with them. Most of them have uh, 30 day trials, so you can pretty much, I don't know, spend four weeks getting to know each one. I use Photomatics mostly. Um, I've used a lot of uh, NIK as well in the past. Also, to go along with your tone mapping software, you're going to need a black and white plugin, which can be used in Photoshop or launched from Lightroom as well. So, I've actually got them lined up in a row. So, if you look at black and white effects from Topaz, perfect black and white from On One, or Silver Effects Pro 2 from NIK as well. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Silver Effects Pro 2 in my workflow. So I'm here in Adobe Bridge and I can show you the five images from my bracket. I launched these images in Photomatics Pro and I made my tone map image. I won't go through that today, I've done HDR tutorials in the past and you can look them up in my tutorials link. So what we would do from here is to select our five images plus the tone map image Go to Tools, Photoshop, Load Files and Photoshop Layers. So you'll get your tone mapped image on top and then it will load them all how your camera shot the bracket. So the next part is going to be masking in layers into our tone map layers and this is why we'll be able to get so much control and variation of the tone and contrast within the image compared to just a single frame. First we need to align the layer. So select the two layers. Align. I always use reposition now. I found that using auto will stretch two layers and then when you come to align the next layer, the stretched layer will be a little bit out. So always use reposition when you're working with multiple layers like this. Check if it's lined up. Yep, that's great. So you can see the bright part is coming in around the buildings. And I could see that's where I'm going to want to brighten up. So let's zoom in. I'm going to go through and do the whole image and then I'll come back to you when I'm done. I've masked all the way down to my final layer but I'll just show you what I'm doing. Uh, we're using the spot healing tool here and we're getting rid of all these um, leaves that were in the water. They just make it a little bit messy so simply just drag over the bits that you want out and it will take content from around the area and match it up. It's really quite easy. So now that that's finished, what I like to do is do a pre-sharpener. And to do that, we simply go to our NRK collection. That's if you have it. But this is a good way to make sure you get a really sharp image at the end. So we go to pre-sharpener. And what you do is you right click on an area and then that will show up in the loop. And then you can adjust and you can see a after in the right and before in the left. Usually around 50% is where it's good. That looks good today though. Next what I'll do is go back to the NIK collection and I'll want to remove noise. 
I allow the software to analyze it, find out which parts are the noisiest and how it's going to repair them. Again, you'll get a before and after down here in your loop. So right click somewhere in the image, before and the after. Today I'm going to use Silver Effects Pro from NIK, but you can easily use uh, like Topaz's black and white effects or even Perfect Black and White from Online, which just got released as well. Very powerful tool. Here we go into Silver Effects Pro 2. Just enlarge that to be your full screen. Start looking through your presets and you'll have a good starting point for one of these. Often the fine art ones are good but they're a bit light today with this image. This one's quite dramatic, isn't it? It's also got uh, custom presets that you can install. And this one, Dark Sky, is what I used on my other one. Let's brighten it up a bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this one because I love this black foil type thick sky. Ansel Adams used to use them in his images, and it looks great. Now I've just gone through the contrast and structure as well and come up with values that I really like. What I want to show you as well in Silver Effects Pro 2 is the sensitivity and the color ranges. And these can have a huge effect on the outcome of the image, especially if, you know, I've got 80% of this image is the blue sky. So just by looking at this, changing the blue here, you can see how different it's going to make the image. And by dropping it down or up, we're going to change the entire mood of the day and the image. Into it. So play around with these uh, color sensitivities. Once you're done with that, we're going to take it back into Photoshop. So let's click OK. So here I just went into Topaz Clarity and I used the Beach Shore preset and I was able to get all this contrast in the sky. And you can see the before and the after. I'm just going to mask in elements now and then I'll show you the results. What I want to do now is smooth out some of this water. So I'm going to go into a program called Noiseware 5 and I'm just going to smooth it right out. So I'll show you how I do that. So you just go into your navigator down here. Let's go into the water. And above you've got the before and then the after down the bottom. So we've got some presets here that you can go through. And this is just used for noise usually, but in the black and white, it's just going to smooth it out completely. Which is what I'm after. So I'll just click OK. And I'm going to mask in elements from that again. So I bring that layer down underneath create my mask, bring up my brush, sped up the video through this part so I wasn't wasting your time. And next I'll add a bit of glow. So I usually go into Perfect Effects 4 for this. Let's quickly show you. It's got about 10 different glow uh, presets and they're all awesome. Move to glows. And look at all these. I'm just looking for Angel Glow as it will really highlight the clouds. I've just sped up the video again to go through the masking quickly. To finalize it, one more thing, I'll go for my output sharpening. Let's go there. So let's just do a quick recap of the process. So we had the five images that we sent into Photomatix Pro. We created a tone mapped image. Then using that tone mapped image, we layered them 
back into Photoshop. Then once in Photoshop, we took it into NRK collection and we did a pre-sharpener. Then I took it into NRK Silver FX Pro 2 and used the settings there. Then I took it to Topaz Clarity to bring out the clouds in the sky as well as contrast in the buildings. We also did Perfect Effects 4 to bring out the glow as well in these areas. We took it into Noiseware 5 to smooth out all these areas in the water and the sky up here as well. And then we finalized it with a sharpener from NIK. Thanks for watching my HDR black and white tutorial. I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing all your beautiful images really soon. Cheers.